Hello, Nikoshin here. Today I want to build a gas-powered stone farm. Here is my finished stone farm. Now that I have a stone farm, next I want to build a clay farm. Here is my finished clay farm. Now that I have a clay farm, next I want to build a villager trade. Stop, stop, stop. If you really want to do my job, then do it properly. Anyways, where was I? Oh yes, clay farming. It is since 119 that mud can be converted to clay by placing it on top of a row of other blocks which are supported by pointed dripstone and then after an undefined amount of time your mud will turn into clay. And a little side note, you don't actually have to use full blocks, you can also use half slabs as long as the block you use can be supported by pointed dripstone and you place mud above, it will be converted even if it looks a bit weird. And if we now hook that row of dripstone support blocks and the converted clay above together to a smart piston now, then we have a finished farm. Well, at least if you're playing with a random tick speed of 2000. With a random tick speed of 3, you quickly realize that these blocks will not convert quick enough to be harvested as clay. Instead, you still have mud at the end of the line. But we can work against that by extending that line. We can add many layers that are stacked on top of each other, giving the mud more time to be converted. Still not enough in the end? Then make it even bigger, make it even wider. Why only one white row? Make it six white. Make layers upon layers with drips on supported blocks and eventually when they reach the top, well, they are converted. And this is what we will now do in the survival world. The clay farm will be right next to the log farm. We can already see this hole here is the one where the platforms will be built with a dripstone underneath where the mud can be converted into clay. So much about the stone farm by the way, because this small dick right here already provided me again with so much stone. I don't think I need much more for the time being. So my plan is I will have that minecart here and I will eventually place my mud right here. And there will be a piston that pushes the mud in the direction of the big hole right here. We will then proceed to push the mud down the hole with this contraption here. The blocks will be pushed down like this gap would be closed and if we now power this piston here, we see how the dirt gets pushed down even further. While wrecking my brain over this thing here, I was also adding the gas cage right here and the railway so gasoline can be sent over here. All the string and all this moss carpet are there so that she can go through the floor without getting hurt and that works quite good, I have to say. So much about the infrastructure of the gas transportation. Now let's get back to our conveyor belt and finish that one. The block stream extenders are in place, let's just sit down and try them out. Instead of my initial plan of pushing the blocks down the big hole, I dug a small shaft right next to my place instead where the blocks go down. Oh, it's broken. Nice. Well, let's see. It's probably that the contraptions for pushing the blocks down are just too slow. Back from the drawing board, this is our new solution now. This machine is much faster than the previous one. It should be 8 or 10 ticks, something around that area. I'm not exactly sure, but as long as it's faster than 12 ticks, which is my clock speed, I'm completely fine with it. And now another test with a new block conveyor system. Yep, it worked. The dirt nozzle that sticks out of the wall. That was sent right down from my FK spot, which means the next task is to push it back up in the most convoluted and slow way possible. And that means we push our blocks over to this row of pistons, they will push the blocks over to that row of pistons and then up and then right and then up and then left and eventually on top we will have our converted mud. We again use the scaffolding trick to send signals up to every piston and we have a clock here that will count to 6, currently is only counting to 1. Meaning, if we place a block right here and then we make an update here, we should be able to see how the farm will work eventually. So we add another block. 
And another block. And there we have our blocks being pushed up to the second stage. So one more and then one more. And then we reach the next layer. Yep. Nice. With the working piston layout prepared, I then did some resource gathering, and when I was collecting my necessary full shulker box of dripstone, I then realized, wait a minute, I'm a redstoner. So here is my finished dripstone farm. I took all of the dripstone I had collected until that point, but I think it was worth it. Should I have made a full episode about that thing? Yeah, probably, I guess. Anyways, with all the resources at hand, I then built up all the 25 layers, one layer needed 66 dripstone, by the way, until I again reached the top. The layer is now mostly finished and already packed up with a lot of mud. Except it's not mud anymore, it's clay now. But now comes as the tricky part, because now we have to take our 6 block wide block stream and compress it down to 1 block. And let's get rid of this test subject. Iron is worthless, so let's have it fall down. We place six blocks right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then we see how the layer is being pushed up. And then, yeah, right into my gas cage because I haven't completed the circuit yet. About that being the complicated part now, you know, normally you would build something like an observer here. Then we would have a block here and a block here. This one actually not. Then you would place a redstone dust and you would argue that every time there is a block being pushed over the observer, there would be a yeah, sticky piston is wrong. There would be an extension from the piston. However, if we try that now, Then really, then we can see. Oh my god, am I so bad? The sad part is, I'm just showing how it's not working. You know, in the end, this will actually be too slow, as you can see right here on the jet that was left over and pushed out instead of into this conveyor line. And because it is too slow, we instead use zero tick pistons. So instead of the thing before, we now use something like this. This is now a sticky piston, because sticky pistons are just the better versions of pistons and zero ticking contraptions. And we have another piston here that updates the piston above. It depends on the direction where this is built, if the piston needs to be below or above. So something like here. But you can easily find that out by placing a block and you see that this piston does not extend, so this is the obsolete one. Like I said, one of the two is the one that is necessary. And you have already also seen that this is now super fast. Meaning if we would do the same test again that we did before. This is how it's supposed to be. And now we can send Gaslin over. We will see, I've built up a tower of dirt. And if she... yeah. And if she hits a good spot where nine blocks are being destroyed, then we will send our clay down there. It is time for the big test. The block pushers are in place. Everything I have to do now is take my blocks. Oh god, I'm nervous. Let's start with a couple first. Eight blocks, maybe. Five, six, seven, eight. With a bit of delay now. The blocks should go down. Just takes a couple of seconds. Hello! Do you see a working farm? Well, I see a working farm right here. And talking about seeing, I think it's quite obvious that I tried to align the farm so that I can see the blocks being destroyed while I place them. It's just a little detail, but it makes it one of my most favorite farms. And honestly, one of the most complicated in this world now next to the Shulker farm. 
Let's go over the full forum in a nice third person view. Everything begins with me sitting in my minecart and placing dirt. Wait, that's supposed to be mud, isn't it? Ah, much better. The mud gets transported down a shaft with the help of some blockstream extenders until it reaches a cave underneath me. And here are two contraptions next to each other that I haven't mentioned yet. The left one detects if either dirt or mud is sent through the farm. If I send dirt through the farm, the minecart rests on top of the dirt. However, if it's mud, then the minecart faces through it because mud is not a full block and an observer can detect the movement of the minecart and therefore shuts down the right contraption, namely a dirt to mud converter. If the converter would try to splash a water bottle on a mud block, it won't become super mud. Instead, the glass bottle would shoot out of the dispenser and get lost. And because of that, we simply disable that feature if we detect mud as the block that is supplied. And as long as we don't switch super fast between the two, everything is okay. After that procedure, the block stream continues to go down until it reaches the bottom of the big hole. On the left turn, we immediately take the signal and send it to our 6 block counter. Previously I had the signal taken directly from the block stream, but I changed that because of timing issues. While we continue to send the block stream to the conversion layers, every 6th block we let the trapdoors change state of some scaffolding towers, which gets detected by observers and is used to control the pistons, which are pushing the mud through the layers. Right on top, we have a contraption that takes the now hopefully converted blocks and condenses them again into a single one wide stream, which in turn gets brought up to another contraption that then again makes it into a three block wide block stream. With that, we have perfectly prepared our block stream for being blasted away by my beloved Gaslin, and we get our clay balls. And then, eventually in 1.20.1, with Autocrafter, we can then craft them again back to some clay blocks, and everything is perfect. Very proud about this contraption here, by the way. If we place a block here, then we create a zero tick, because the block powers this piston here, and because the piston pushes the block down again, it immediately loses its own power source, and that creates the redstone zero tick. However, if we would now try to extend the zero tick to these two pistons here, it won't work. What we can do though instead is we power this piston here. This block here basically makes a quick switcheroo back and forth within one tick, because this contraption here also creates a zero tick again. And we have a redstone line here that connects to this line. So within that switcheroo it quickly, again as a zero tick, powers through, it powers the two blocks that are above here and they cause connect to these two pistons and that makes it that all the three pistons are powered, not only this one. I think I'll have to take a break from this farm. You know, I was already prepared for making some decorations, building a house around it so that it also fits quite good to the log farm which is on the left side, but I think that has to wait for another day. For now, let's get on my sofa and watch some YouTube videos. My name is Slice Time. I'm here to show you the changes. The heights at which mobs rode minecarts were wrong, and so those have all been changed to new ones that make more sense. I'll see you next time. Oh no, please don't tell me. Wait a second, no. Oh. Oh, I see how it is. This update happened to destroy my farms. You see, normally you can imagine there are a couple of glass blocks directly in the view of Gaslin, but now that she's sitting a bit higher, the glass blocks are not properly aligned anymore. All the farms which are dependent on exact positioning of Gaslin are probably now broken as well. Ooh. Nice. Okay, I guess this is the more resilient of the farms that I have. The wood farm could break immediately and the damage would be quite big. The stone farm is made out of, of a lot of stone, so... Oh. Yeah, she can't actually see me anymore. So yep, this is broken. Hopefully it's fixable rather easily. Step 1 of the operation, we lower that field by one block. 
Okay, this was too deep down. So the fireball exploded right here. Ouch. Come on, come on, come on. <gasps> oh, oh, no. No, no, no. Oh. Oh. Then, I don't know how long I have sat here. One or two hours at least, maybe a bit more even than two hours, I don't know. But here is it, here is the cobblestone. I hope fixing the wood farm will be a better experience. Wait, what the? Oh no, it was burning. Oh no. Great, it's broken. You don't know how tedious it is to fix this. Mm. Wood farm is also fixed now. It was very tedious and for full disclosure, the farms broke before I built the clay farm, but I wanted to start the video with the clay farm and because of that, this is the first thing you have seen. Even it was happening after, yeah, the big destruction of my farms. You know I'm a bit sad because I was thinking that my ghast farms were the superior versions against the TNT duping farms because they won't rely on any obscure game mechanics that will be fixed in version I don't know which. I thought my farms would survive the next couple of years, maybe five or six in my mind. They didn't. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry for everyone who built my farms and now they're broken and I hope you have a better experience at fixing them than I had. Talking about farms, last week I asked my viewers for a name for my pet wither and instead of my hopeful one comment from one of my most favorite viewers, I even got comments from my two most favorite viewers. The choice will be done by a dropper draft. The first option is Grum or alternatively it could have been Dinnerbone. It's not about the name, it's about the fact that the wither would be upside down and I could see the heads inside the farm. And the other one is the chicken nugget fryer. And which of the two it is, we will decide by flicking that lever here. And it is Rum. I'm sorry chicken nugget fryer, I will keep your name tag. Maybe we will change that in a couple of weeks, a couple of months. But for now, we have Grum sitting here in my farm and also being on the top of my screen whenever I run through the nether. Congratulations. Looking at it, I do find it quite funny. End of the episode. The real end will be a time lapse from building my stone farm because I do have some footage that I can still show you. It was meant to be a full episode, which I then, well, after a couple of months I just discontinued working on it because I didn't like the video very much and honestly stone farms are something I don't think anyone is really interested in. You can dig out stone so fast and in such a big quantities. Why would you build a farm for that? Well, I do like it though. <laughs> I like my stone farm, yes. So, uh, if you also like my stone farm, then consider leaving a like, add a comment, maybe I will make a video about my stone farm, I don't know. Ask me nicely and I consider it. Anyways, I'm off. Have a nice day and goodbye until next time.